welcome to VTO e Shikshana program. I, Dr. G. M. Krishnaya, Professor and Head of the Department of Chemistry, Sir M. Vishweshwar Institute of Technology, Bengaluru, Karnataka, India. So, I am doing that work about yesterday we were discussing about that engineering chemistry module 2, engineering chemistry module 2, corrosion and its control. Uh, we were discussing about that, uh, uh, you know, like uh, this one corrosion and its control. Uh, you know, this one uh, syllabus I told you about that metallic corrosion, metallic corrosion definition, electrochemical theory of corrosion, uh, factors affecting the rate of corrosion, temperature, pH, current density, anodic to cathodic areas, P, um, uh, this one temperature, etc., types of corrosion, differential, differential metallic corrosion, differential aeration corrosion that includes the pitting and water line corrosion by taking example. Then corrosion control, I am going to do today that is about that anodizing of aluminum, cathodic protection, sacrificial anode method and impressed voltage methods. Metal coatings, galvanization, tinning, corrosion penetration rate, numerical problems, going to do it afternoon. So now, uh, you know like uh, this is a uh, metallic corrosion is nothing but distant metals are alized by the surrounding environment through chemical or electrochemical reactions. Okay, then uh, electrochemical theory of corrosion is ex by explained by with by taking an example about that iron as an example. There iron into iron ox iron into Fe2 plus 2 minus that corrosion takes place at anode. This is anodic reaction, cathodic reaction, solution is aerated, neutral, alkaline, uh, etc. Then later that is about that uh, yellow, uh, yellow or brown rust are formed later black rust or uh, this one metal uh, black rust has formed about that the corrosion. Then types of different types of corrosion that is differential metallic corrosion by taking example about that iron and copper, iron is lower electrode potential with respect to that copper minus 44 minus 0 0.44 and 0 point plus 0 0.34 uh, iron and copper respectively. Hence, in this case iron acts as an anode undergoes corrosion. And by taking another example uh, that is zinc with respect to iron, that here zinc is lower than to that iron uh, that is about that minus 0 0.76 volt reduction potential, electro potential and uh, iron uh, minus 0 0.44. Hence, iron behaves as anode, iron behaves as cathode here, whereas in the previous slide iron behaves as anode. So, here uh, cor uh, corrosion takes place at anode. Corrosion takes place at anode that zinc is going to happen about that anode. So, a corrosion uh, this one electrons flowing from anode to cathode about that. So, here this metal is corroded, iron is protected. So, that means uh, you know like we should avoid of using that uh, different types of metals that means bolt and nut should be same metal. Le for example, lead tin solder even buried iron pipeline connected to zinc bar etc. steel pipe etc about that that is uh, not the one about that. Next. Differential aeration corrosion by taking example about that, this is about that oxygen about that you know like when you take that uh, one uh, metal is submerged, submerged or below that water level that is less oxygen, oxygenated area whereas the one uh, which is about that this is about that more oxygenated area. So, now this acts as an anode, this part behaves as anode, other portion behaves as cathode. So, corrosion takes place at in this one. And even that water line corrosion, if we take that metallic container about that, even that one, whatever the water is filled, this is about less oxygenated one, corrosion takes place here. This oxygen cathode, this portion behaves as anode, so corrosion takes place at anode. Even that ship also, whatever the one about the sea water, whatever the one submerged in that water about that, uh, the things is going to be corroded because this is less oxygenated, whereas this is more oxygenated about that, that portion behaves as cathode, other portion behaves as anode. So, corrosion takes place at this, this portion. So, remaining portion behaves as cathode that is going to be protected about that. Even next is that, uh, uh, you know like pitting corrosion, they told you that uh, even a drop of that things has been uh, put on that uh, metal, so the thing is dust, oil, etc. about that, this portion behaves as anode because of that less oxygenated area whereas the other portion behaves as cathode and whenever our vehicle is damaged, scratched about that, that port must be first has to be painted. Otherwise, 
uh, when you are not going to protect from the, uh, uh, the corrosion, then that portion we have scattered, that portion we have scattered, the pit formation is going to happen that. Then uh, this is the electrochemical series, so far I discussed about that, uh, uh, what is um, this one, for example, iron 0, uh, minus 0 0.44 and even zinc uh, minus 0.76. Uh, aluminium, this is the thing about that. For example, lithium, uh, lithium about that three, uh, uh, this one three, uh, this is the readings about that potential electrochemical series. So, about the lower one is going to be corroded, higher one is not going to be uh, protected about that. That is what I explained about that uh, zinc, uh, iron, uh, zinc and uh, this one copper and iron uh, by taking iron and zinc copper, then iron and zinc, which is going to be iron acts as an anode as well as cathode depending upon the uh, depending upon the electrode potential with respect to that. Now, corrosion control, I told you in the beginning that uh, metallic corrosion and its control about that, you know like uh, different techniques uh, of corrosion control. See now, there are a number of techniques are there about that, I told you yesterday that somewhere about that, you have to apply paints, enamels, okay. enamels, for example, tube lights, refrigerator, washing machine. Uh, automobile exhaust, automobile uh, industries, even that for example, if you take that uh, Maruti 800, most of the parts are non-metallic, wherever necessarily metallic parts are used, whereas ambassador car, most of the parts are metallic, wherever necessarily use that uh, non-metallic one about that. Even the electroplating process, the electroplating process is nothing but, electroplating is nothing but, it's a, it's electro, it is deposition of one metal over the another metal, that is about that cathodic protection, it is nothing but cathodic protection, uh, electrons flowing from anode to cathode, this part is going to be protected about that. So, then the electroless plating process, electroless plating process is that about that, it is the deposition of a metal from its salt solution on a catalytically active surface by a suitable reducing agent without passing electricity or current. Electroless plating is a deposition metal from its salt solution. For example, electroless plating of nickel from nickel chloride, copper from the copper sulphate and uh, without possible on a catalytically active surface by a suitable reducing agent like uh, um, sodium hypophosphite, etc. Uh, about that, uh, this one used about that uh, without passing current, that means no anode, no cathode. Whereas, the ad major advantage about this electroless plating process is that uh, metal, non-metal or an alloy. Alloy is nothing but homogeneous mixture of two or more metals. You can say about that stainless steel is called 18 edge steel, 18 percent of nickel and 8 percent of chromium about that. Okay, electroplating of uh, this electroplating about that, whereas non-metal non means um, you know like chalk, wood, thread, air, etc. Metal means conducting materials, whereas electroplating process only metals can be plated, only metals can be plated, whereas in electroless plating process we can plate that both, both all, anything can be plated, wood, thread, semiconductor, insulators, like plastic, glass, wood, thread, etc. can be plated. Corrosion, uh, corrosion is a phen natural phenomenon in which a metal is converted into more stable compound. The rate of corrosion can be controlled. Uh, the rate of corrosion can be controlled by preventing the form uh, formations of uh, galvanic cells. Some of the commonly used methods to control the rate of corrosion have been discussed below. That means, protective coatings, an important method of protective coatings of a metal, uh, metal, uh, um, metal from corrosion is to apply protective coating, coating or painting. The protective coatings may be metallic inorganic, non-inorganic, non non-metallic or organic substances. An important method of protecting, uh, protecting layer about the protecting a metal from corrosion is to apply a protective coating. Uh, the protective coating may be metallic metals, non-metals, uh, organic, inorganic uh, substances, etc. about that. So, then you know like uh, just I am going to show you the flow chart about this. See now protective coatings. Protective coatings are divided into inorganic coatings and organic coatings. Organic coatings, somewhere I told you about that paints and enamels. Electroless plate, electroplating process, electroless plate before that you are going to use that about that organic coatings that is nothing but paints and enamels, lead block, lead red, etc. Okay. Then under inorganic coatings, uh, metal, uh, metal coatings that is anodic coatings, that is example you are going to study galvanization. 
galvanization of iron to avoid corrosion and cathodic coating uh, that is nothing but tinning even cathodic method is nothing but what electroplating electroplating process and the surface conversion coatings that is anodizing anodizing of aluminum anod what is anodizing on this one because of porosity and pass painting you are going to study about that this one i am going to explain one by one what galvanization tinning process uh, then anodizing and pass painting methods about that so these are about that protective coatings are divided into two parts that is about that uh, inorganic and organic coatings Met, uh, under uh, inorganic coatings metal coatings ex the example uh, that is anodic and uh, cathodic coatings that is you are going to study uh, galvanization and tinning process and uh, surface conversion coatings anodizing anodizing of aluminum and uh, anodizing this on pass painting these are the methods i am going to explain next so now anodizing anodizing is generally uh, produced on non ferrous metals like aluminum zinc magnesium and their alloys okay alloy is nothing but homogeneous mixture of two or more metals for example brass copper in brass copper in brass that is about that copper in brass that is about that this one copper is a uh, homogeneous mixture means same state about the solid solid aluminum when made as cathode allows the passage of electrons but ceases to conduct uh, conduct when it is made anode in aqueous solution uh, of chromic acid uh, or sulfuric acid sulfuric acid h2so4 sulfuric acid is an acid strong acid this is because of the formation of thin layer of al2 aluminum oxide over the metal so now when aluminum uh, when made as cathode allows the passage of electrons but it ceases stops to conduct when it is made as anode it the aqu in aqueous solution of this one uh this uh, works about that this is because of that formation of a thin layer of aluminum oxide so now aluminum uh, partition some people are going to talk about aluminum partition of zinc sheet etc so now aluminum uh, you know like wherever we go about that temporary uh, not possible to construct the walls and all to avoid cost and all you know like people are going to uh, do that about aluminum partition so maintenance is easy because of its porosity whatever name about that zinc sheet zinc sheet also you know like people say zinc sheet whatever call it as in that uh, you know like to protect that from that atmosphere in the air temperature air pressure unlike bangalore maybe chennai or uh, this one what is that uh, uh, some other places about that okay this is about uh, example about anodizing is generally produced on non ferrous metals ferrous metals non ferrous metals like aluminum zinc magnesium and their alloys so now anodizing of aluminum so now anodizing aluminum you have to say about that here cathode anode is aluminum uh, then cathode is steel or iron or lead okay steel iron or lead then uh, this is a electrolyte and this is a battery dc conversion about that so here anode is aluminum cathode is copper steel lead electrolyte so now you, uh, if you 5 to 10% of that chromic acid if you get that uh, thin layer if you want to get that uh, strong layer, this one about that you have to use that 10% of sulfuric acid how do you prepare 10% sulfuric acid 1 liter of sulfuric acid to be added uh, to the 10 liters 1 is to 10 ratio what is current density current density is uh, 100 a by m square that means current density is that here you know like when you are doing that process about that anode cathode whatever the one about that how much current uh, current you are passing to this this is nothing but current density current density is nothing but current per unit area current per unit area that is about that for example electroplating of nickel uh, 3 to 8 milliampere per decimeter squared whereas here 100 ampere per meter squared about that and voltage how much amount of voltage you have to be passed 40 volt Uh, electrode reaction this is anodic reaction 2 al plus uh, 3 h2o gives al2 o3 plus 6 h plus plus 6 electrons and 6 electrons accepted here this e, this one about that 6 h plus gives hydrogen uh, hydrogen okay so then overall reaction 2 ai plus 3 h2o plus al2 o3 because this is going to be cancelled about that and this also is going to be cancelled and al2o3 plus 3h2o 
that h2 over 3h2. So now uh, anodizing of aluminum, this is the condition about that anode you have to take aluminum, cathode you have to take copper or steel or lead, okay, Cu or steel, uh, yes, this one or lead Pb, electrolyte 5 to 10 percent of chromic acid, uh, chromic acid or 10 percent of sulfuric acid, you cannot take both. Any one now you have to take. If you want that thin one, you have to take that. If you take more one, you have to take that about that 10 percent sulfuric acid. You have to maintain 35 degrees Celsius, just above the room temperature about that. <coughs> Current density you have to maintain 100 ampere per meter square voltage you have to maintain about that. I told you current density is nothing but current per how much current you are passing per unit area. Okay, electrode reaction, this is the one is going to convert Al2O3 plus 2x plus, plus 2x gives about that, this is the overall reaction about that. 2Al plus 3H2O gives Al2O3 aluminum oxide plus 3H2, this is the, uh, the hydrogen above this. Okay. So, next is that here. So, just whatever things I told you say, say about that, just I am going to about that, the metal after pre-treatment, pre-treatment is made to oxidize anode and steel copper or, or lead oxidize a cathode. I told you steel, copper or lead Pb oxidize this one. The electrolyte consists of 5 to 10 percent of that chromic acid. The temperature is about that is to be maintained 35 degree Celsius. A current density, current per unit area 100 per 100 A by meter squared about that. Um, this one is applied which oxidize the outer layer of the aluminum to Al2O3 aluminum oxide. An oxide layer of Al2O3 with a thickness of 2 to 8 millimeter is formed. For higher thickness, that is what I told you about that. You have to use chromic acid 5 to 10 percent for thickness about 2 to 8. If you want to have that 4 more thickness, you have to go for that uh, this one electrolyte 10 percent sulfuric acid, 10 percent sulfuric acid, S L U sulfuric acid, okay, sulfuric acid is a strong acid. This is about that 10 percent, okay, 1 is to 10 ratio about that sulfuric acid, whatever about is used as an electrolyte. And anodized articles are used as in uh, a soap box uh, because in a soap box you know to avoid corrosion, uh, you know like tiffin carriers, containers, even window frames, you know like people are talking about that uh, particularly in Bangalore or Mumbai, whenever people go for construction of the building, they will ask that cost of the building etc. per square, whatever the one about that. Now, when we use the wooden articles, when we use wooden articles, we will not get that uh, uh, cheaper uh, uh, houses about that. People are going to use that uh, window frame so that, so they are going to avoid that uh, uh, windows and doors about that. These frames and are going to use metallic frames only to avoid corrosion number one to reduce the cost also. Uh, and the name plates, wherever people are there about that teachers or even officers are going to display there before their offices and all and uh, used about that. Decorative uh, purpose, objectives, etc. Whatever the objects you are going to do about that, this is going to be used about that. This is not going to be, uh, for example, you know like door windows and all, some of the decorative purposes are required, uh, metals are, uh, objectives are required, people are going to do about that. So, now the metal after pretreatment is made to set in that so and so, this one by maintaining 5 to 10 percent of that chromic acid to get 2 to 8 millimeter of that thickness about that one. If you want to more than more thickness about that, go for that 10 percent of that uh, sulfuric acid. Uh, so, that you will get about that and used and, uh, and anodized articles are used in general one about that, used in that uh, restaurants about that, soap boxes, windows, doors, tiffin uh, ca carriers, etc. Even that vehicle, automobile uh, industries also that mirrors, etc and name plates, even that flights also they are using that to avoid corrosion because they are not going to affect that, but is because of its porosity. So, now next is that phosphating, phosphating is that about that year anode uh, metal uh, phosphate layer and cathode this one about the coating of a metal material such as iron, steel, iron, steel, zinc, aluminum with the metal phosphate is called phosphating coating of a material such as iron, steel, zinc, aluminum with metal uh, sulphate, any metal sulphate is called phosphating. It is done by oxidizing the outer layer of the base metal in phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid, uh, um, phosphoric acid medium 
Phosphating involves the following steps. I repeat, this one about that, the coating of materials such as iron, steel, etc., iron with the metal phosphate is called uh, phosphating. It is done, it is carried out uh, um, oxidizing the outer layer of the base metal in a phosphoric acid medium, phosphoric acid medium uh, using uh, this one phosphate, phosphating involves the following steps. So, now dissolution of uh, metal as metal ions. So, metal into metal oxide, metal into metal ions. So, the number step one. Number two is that uh, reaction of metal ions with the phosphate ion to form metal phosphate. So, here metal into this one about that reaction of reaction of metal ions with the phosphate ion to uh, metal phosphate. Deposition of the metal phosphate on the, on the surface of the metal. So, these are the three steps about that. Dissolution of metal as metal ions, reaction of metal ions with the phosphate ion to form metal phosphate. Third one is the deposition of a metal uh, of the metal phosphate on the surface of the metal. So, the bath solution consisting of mixture of free phosphoric acid a metal phosphate and an auxiliator. Usually zinc and magnesium metal phosphates are used. The bath solution consists of a mixture of free phosphoric acid, a metal phosphate and an auxiliator. Usually zinc and magnesium, zinc and magnesium metal phosphates are used, zinc, metal, zinc phosphate or manganese phosphate are used. Auxiliators such as nitrate NO3 minus. ClO3 chlorate are used, nitrate chlorates are used as this is NO3 minus and ClO3 minus, chlorate minus, chlorate minus are used speed of the reaction. That means, it accelerates, it accelerates, it accelerates the reaction rate about that. Okay. Then, the pH is maintained about acidic 1.8 to between 1.8 and 3.2, a temperature around 35 degree Celsius is maintained. Phosphate coatings, just I repeat that uh, oxalators such as nitrate chlorates are used to speed up, to increase the rate of the reaction, oxalerates, okay, that is what oxalerators. The pH is maintained about between 1.8 and 3.2, a temperature about maintained about 35 degree Celsius. Phosphate coatings are porous and do not offer good resistance to corrosion. Phosphate coatings are porous and do not, this one because of porosity, okay, it avoids that corrosion. The coatings are useful such as base for paints and impart uh, good paint addition quality to the surface of the metal. That means, whatever the object, whatever the thing is coated about that, that should be imported, that should not come out of that, that should be adhered to the base metal about the coatings are used as a base for paints and import good paints about that. For example, you know like uh, you know some of the metals are being corroded, even tables, chairs and particularly chemistry labs and all, they are going to coat that about this one, okay, like paint, okay, base, base for paints and this one, then corrosion can be avoided, corrosion due to wet and dry corrosion. Uh, this is about that, uh, this one I told you, uh, dissolution of metal as metal ions, metal into metal ions, reaction of metal ions with the phosphate ion uh, to form metal phosphate. Deposition of the metal, deposition of metal phosphate on the surface of metal, uh, you know like the bath solution, the bath solution consists of mixture of free phosphoric acid, a metal phosphate and an accelerator, usually zinc and magnesium metal phosphates are used. Uh, metal phosphates are used about that, you know like this one pH has to be maintained about 1.8 to 3.2, temperature about 35 degree Celsius. Phosphate coatings are porous and do not offer good resistance to corrosion. Okay. That means, you know like iron is, iron is porous material okay. and non-stichometric, that means our object is not uniform like that, thin film, loose film formation. So, these coatings are useful as a base, uh, base for paints and uh, import a good paint addition quality to the surface of the metal. So, next uh, 
cathodic protection. What is cathodic protection? Explain sacrificial unknown method and impressed voltage method. It is an electrical method of protecting uh, protecting a metal or alloy. Uh, metal alloy is nothing but homogeneous mixture of two or more metals. Okay, for by converting it completely into cathode. In cathodic protection, uh, the electrons uh, are provided from an external source so that the metal or alloy remains as cathode. So it can be achieved by sacrificial anode method and impressed voltage method. For example, you know, like uh, this is the one metal, other metal. This metal is going to be corroded, and uh, this one magnesium is going to be corroded. That is called sacrificial anode method. So in this method. The metal to be protected from corrosion is converted into cathode by converting into metal which is anodic to it. The base metal is usually iron, iron, copper, or brass. Metals like magnesium, aluminium, zinc are more uh, active and ends are used as anodes. Being uh, more active, acts as uh, anode undergo corrosion. So uh, I told you about that last class that corrosion takes place at anode, corrosion uh, oxidation, oxidation nothing but cathode, anode is nothing but oxidation that is corrosion. Okay, now you know and supply of electrons to the specimen. In this way, the protected metal acts as cathode since uh, anodic uh, metals are sacrificed to protect the metal uh, structure. This technique is called sacrificial anodic method or sac anode method. So that means the base metal is usually iron, copper, or brass. Uh, metals like magnesium, aluminium, zinc are more active and hence used as an anode. Being more active, acts as an anode, undergo corrosion, and supply electrons to the specimen. In this way, uh, that in this way the protected metal acts as an anode. Uh, the, in this way, the protected metal acts as a cathode. Sorry, acts as a cathode. Since anodic metals are sacrificed to protect the metal structure, this technique is called this one above. For example, if you take that best examples of sacrificial anode method are one is that this object you know connected to this one. So this acts as an anode, this acts as a cathode, so that electrons flowing from this one, this is going to be protected above. This is below the ground level, buried level, say about that. And if you go to that ocean, somewhere I told you while explaining. Differential aeration corrosion also. So same strip about that. See now this is the magnesium strip. This is the one. This is submerged. Now this metal is fixed about that. This is going to be corroded. This is going to be corroded. The other one is submerged in the ship. Or this one ocean. This is not going to be corroded because these are electrons flowing from this side to that side about that. So this acts as a cathode. This acts as an anode. Here this acts as an anode. This acts as a cathode. So this is about that cathodic production, uh, about that uh, the anodic method. Uh, so in this method to be protected from corrosion is converted into cathode about that. Next is that uh, impressed current or voltage, current and voltage one and the same, I or V. Okay. Impressed current or voltage method, this is a method, it is a method to protect the base metal by applying a direct current uh, larger than uh, the corrosion current. The earlier one, you need not apply any current to this one. Okay, cheaper method. This one is a costly method. You have to pass current to that. Okay, which is called impressed current method. Corrosion. This one about that applying a direct current larger than the corrosion current, which is called impressed current. The metal to be protected is made as cathode by connecting to the negative terminal to a DC direct current. Okay, uh, source positive terminal is connected to positive connect uh, connected to an inert uh, anode. Uh, then, uh, like graphite, inert anode like uh, graphite, and uh, anode being uh, inert remains unaffected. Graphite is widely used as an inert anode in uh, in this in this method. Platinum, silicon, iron can also be used as an as an anode. So I repeat that impressed or current voltage method is that in this method that is protecting the base metal by applying by by applying uh, you know like uh, direct current layer. Uh, the, it is a method uh, this one uh, than the corrosion current which is called impressed uh, current. The metal to be protected is made as cathode by connecting to the negative terminal of direct current. 
source. Positive terminal is connected to an inner, inert anode like graphite. Anode being anode being inert remains unaffected. Graphite is usually used as the inert anode in this method. Even platinum, silicon, and iron also can be used as an anode. This silicon. Uh, you know like uh, software company whatever the people are talking about that silica without silicon nothing is going to be about that production of silicon by union carbide method about that you know like that is more important actually this has to be reactant also silicon raw material we have to get that about the different methods about that recycled etc then you will get that uh, um, this one what is that useful silicon to you be used in that software companies about that so this is the one protective protected metal this is inert one positive one connected to the inert metal graphite negative connected to the whatever the one you are going to be used as cathode. This acts as an anode electrons flowing from anode to cathode about that the things are going to be reversed about that. So, next is that uh, metal uh, coatings anodic coatings are sacrificial coatings anodic coatings I told you somewhere about that anodic method cathodic method about that anodic method uh, is nothing but uh, uh, this one about the whereas cathodic method is nothing but electroplating of nickel, chromium, copper, gold, silver, etc. about that. So, next is that here in this, this involves coating an active metal over the surface of a metal. So, sir, the metal to be coated or plated must be anodic with respect to the base metal. The coating prevents corrosion, it prevents corrosion, corrosion other than corrosion nothing but erosion of limestone etc. by acting as a barrier between the base metal and the corrosive environment. The main advantage of anodic coatings is even if the base metal is not completely covered, if there is a scratch on the coating or if the coating is ruptured, the base metal does not undergo corrosion. See whatever the one about that base metal just you have to coat about that any scratch any leak about that is not going to affect about if there is a scratch on the coating or if the coating is ruptured the base metal does not undergo any corrosion that means not going to affect the environment. It is because of the surface of the base metal is cathodic that means corrosion takes place at anode that acts as an anode the base metal is cathodic with respect to the coating. In this way the, the coated metal undergoes corrosion thereby preventing the base metal. So, this is the one anodic coating as a method about that you know like uh, um, this involves coating of an active metal over the surface of a base metal the surface of the base metal base metal is going to be protected since it is over that the metal to be coated must be anodic with respect to the base metal. So, only corrosion is going to take place only on the anodic coating prevents corrosion by acting as a barrier between base metal and the corrosive environment. Corrosive environment means salt water etc. about the main advantage of anodic coating is even if the base metal is not completely covered scratch uh, etc that is not going to be affected to the base metal because the base metal acts as a cathode whatever the one is coated over that about the acts as an anode with respect to coating. In this way coated metal undergoes corrosion thereby preventing the base metal this is called uh, sacrificing the things about that that is why it is called as sacrificial coating it is going to be sacrificed whatever the metal uh, one is coated over that about that that is going to be corroded about this so, sacrifice okay to sacrifice that. Galvanization Zinc coatings are generally obtained by odd dipping of the base metal in a molten zinc bath and the process is called galvanization. Uh, you know like uh, people are going to say about that galvanization. See when people are using uh, pipes for irrigation purpose or pumping water uh, that must be galvanized pipes only otherwise pipes are going to metals are going to be corroded. Okay, galvanization consists of odd dipping which involves the following steps. So, four to five six steps are there about that galvanization is a very very important as per the VTU syllabus that you know like this one you know zinc coatings are generally obtained by odd dipping or dipping of the base metal. So, in a molten zinc bath and the process is called galvanization. Galvanization consists of the uh, of odd dipping which involves the following um, steps about that. See number one the metal surface with the organic solvents remove organic impurities such as oil grease present on it. So, this is the number one degreasing that means whatever the object is 
this one before going to do that objects first you have to clean the surface object see now whenever we construct the building people are going to clean the surface of using organic solvent or alkali even that metal sheet even metal sheet before going to coating about this uh, people have to remove the dirt by using emery paper or dipping in using that acetone remove the dust then the metal is washed with dilute sulfuric acid h2so4 this is called pickling to remove uh, to remove rust and other inorganic deposits okay then this is acid pickling about that degreasing means to remove the dust then third one is this is washed with uh, well with water and air dried see now we have to remove the dirt etc i have to do all these things about that then washed with water okay then then object is ready the metal is treated with a mixture of aqueous solution of zinc chloride solution and ammonium chloride solution zinc chloride solution and uh, which acts as a flux and dried the metal is then dipped in uh, molten zinc uh, molten zinc uh, this is the molten zinc about that uh, you know like this one at uh, maintain about higher temperature say uh, for 450 degrees celsius the excess of zinc is removed uh, by passing the metal through rollers or by wiping see now whatever the objects you are going to do this is a one about that so one you have to remove that whatever the one unused one uh, excess one could to be removed by passing the metal through a roller like roller means about that in between you have to pass it to that sheet uh, that means excess one will be removed uh, through rollers by these are all the steps about that i told the galvanization about that galvanization consists of odd dipping which involves the following steps five steps about that you know like first cleaning the surface has to be washed with organic solvent or alkali followed by acid treatment like acetone etc using emery paper then you have to remove the dirt by dipping in that with sulfuric acid and then you have to wash with water properly and dry that then object is ready then metal is mixture is in aqua this one about the zinc chloride ammonium chloride which acts as a flux the metal is dipped in molten zinc Uh, maintain temperature about higher temperature that is 450 degrees celsius about that and you will get that final excess zinc is removed by passing the metal through your rollers or by wiping so you have to remove that whatever the sheet is there about that you have to remove that wipe that about that this one or through passing through a roller about that you will get that uh, uh, expected product so cathodic coating Um, anodic coating i explained about so far then now it is called cathodic coating it involves cathodic coatings involves uh, the coating of a base metal with uh, a metal which is uh, cathodic to it for example iron and steel iron and steel uh, are coated with uh, metals i reduction potential somewhere I explained about i reduction potential as copper zinc nickel tin uh, zinc uh, not zinc copper nickel tin silver chromium which are less reactive than base metal and hence resistant to corrosion that means somewhere i told you about that iron corrodes faster than other metals nickel chromium copper gold uh, copper sorry uh, silver gold etc about that because iron is a porous material and uh, nickel chromium copper are non porous material iron is as this one uh, thick film formation and non stichometric the surface object is not uniform whereas nickel chromium copper gold silver etc non porous thin material and stichometric the surface object is uniform that's why we are going to coat it over this called cathodic protection this acts as an anode this acts there is nothing but electroplating process electroplating of nickel means we are going to plate over the base metal base metal means cheaper metal cheaper metal means iron etc about that okay silver chromium which are less reactive than base metal and are ends uh, resistant to re resistant to corrosion cathodic coating should be given in uh, in such a way that uh, the coating covers the entire surface of without uh, leaving even pin holes unlike organ uh, the anodic coatings otherwise the base metal undergoes corrosion because base metal acts as an anode uh, coated metal acts as a cathode see now this is the Uh, inside metal is an anode this is cathode so now uh, if if it is any hole is there about that this metal is going to be about whereas earlier one uh, was different earlier one inside a cathode outside anode so even that even any crack and all it's anodic coating no problem but here 
even the pin, uh, even that uh, small, very, very this one also thin also, it is uh, going to affect the base metal, base metal because it is an anodic one. Otherwise, the base metal undergoes corrosion rapidly because the base metal is anodic with respect to the coating, which results in the formation of large cathodic area and small anodic area. Somewhere I told you about that, uh, uh, somewhere I told you, somewhere I told you about that. Uh, uh, anodic and cathodic areas about that metal 1, metal 2, metal 1, metal 2 because whatever the coated one this acts as a smaller area, other one is this one, this is uh, this one about that uh, bigger area. So, then uh, you know like this acts as an anode, other one acts as a cathode. So, ins inside metal is going to be corroded. So, this is the one uh, whatever the pretreatment degreasing uh, as Somewhere I told you about the degreasing, uh, acid pickling that means you have clean the object using organic iron sheet, then you have to uh, pay, uh, dip in that sulfuric acid, then wash with water, dry it, zinc chloride flux about that and similar to that galvanization only, uh, zinc chloride, ammonium chloride also this one molten uh, uh, solution about that. This is 292, this is a peculiar case about that around uh, 219 to 310 unlike, unlike 450 Celsius plus or 2 minutes okay. But here you have to maintain only between 2 to, uh, 219 to 310 that means about that you know like this is the 100 degree Celsius we are 90 degree Celsius we have to do that rolls out about that or uh, palm oil uh, it is not plam P A L M palm oil and excess can be removed about that rollers already I told you about that. Uh, uh, except uh, galvanization, the similar to galvanization about that, passing through that or wipe about that. So, degreasing means the object has to be clean it, uh, clean with water and remove the dirt about that uh, using emery paper, then dip it in sulfuric acid, this is called acid pickling, then wash with water properly, dry it, then passing through a molten uh, solution about zinc chloride and ammonium chloride solution, maintain temperature about that uh, to around uh, 219 to 310 degree Celsius between that temperature and passing through that uh, this one uh, form out form oil and uh, excess can be removed by rolling uh, plated with uh, tin. Uh, this one iron sheet passing through a plate with a tin about that roller you will get the, this is a roller say about that you will get that excess one or wipe that about that. So, so the tinning or tin coating is carried out by odd dipping which involves the following steps. The sheet is washed with uh, washed with organic solvent or alkali followed by etc. Uh, followed by um, the acid treatment. So remove grease or oil deposits. Then it is washed with sulfuric acid to remove rust and scale deposits about that. In mechanical workshop, people are going to remove that metal sheet about that uh, dirt which is deposited about that. Later you have to dip it in the sulfuric acid. After that, uh, rinse with water and uh, air dried. Then it is treated with an aqueous mixture of zinc chloride and ammonium chloride solution which helps uh, the molten tin to adhere to the metal surface. Whatever the one is about that, there is going to be corroded about that. This one, the to avoid corrosion, this is going to be plated over that. Finally, it is dipped in a tank containing molten tin at 30, 300 degrees Celsius. Somewhere I told you 219 to 310, this is the one around, this is the mean approximately. 300 degrees Celsius. Excess tin is removed by passing the metal uh, through series of rollers and metal is then dipped uh, in uh, palm oil, now we discarded palm oil uh, um, to prevent the oxidation of tin. Oxidation of tin is nothing but what? Corrosion. Oxidation is nothing but corrosion. To avoid corrosion, you have to do that about that. Okay, it is a thing about that. This is tinning or tin coating. So, uh, is carried out by our dipping solution was the following, first wash with water, remove the dirt uh, deposit surface using organic solvent like uh, acetone etc. and using emery paper etc. Then wash with, um, then dip in sulfuric acid, wash with sulfuric, uh, the sulfur remove rust and uh, scale deposits over that. Uh, you know like uh, just you have to take the sulfuric acid in this, frame about that, you have to dip into that sulfuric acid. The whatever the dust is there, this is going to be this one. Then wash with water, rinse with water, and uh, then dry it. Uh, this one. Then it is treated with an aqueous mixture of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride solution, which helps to molten into adhere on this. This one about that. And finally, it is dipped uh, 
uh, in a tank containing molten temperature that is 300 degrees around 300 degrees Celsius, 2, uh, 219 to 3, uh, 310 degrees Celsius, 219 to uh, 2192 300 310 degree Celsius that is what we have mentioned about that uh, around 300 Celsius excess tin uh, uh, is removed by passing the metal through series of rollers and metals this one about that dipped in palm oil to prevent uh, this one about tin you know like tin uh, one is plated one used to store the things about that for example oil etc. So corrosion inhibitors these are the substances which when added in small concentration to a corrosive environment to decrease the corrosion rate. So what are corrosion inhibitors? Explain anodic and cathodic corrosion inhibitors. So corrosion, there are substances which then used in small concentration to corrosive environment decreases the corrosion rate. Different types of corrosion that is corrosion inhibitors, uh, this one corrosion inhibitors can be classified into four general types based on the methods in which uh, they work on the metal to prevent corrosion, to avoid corrosion. They are cathodic inhibitors, anodic, anodic inhibitors, uh, then uh, corrosion inhibitors, uh, then anodic inhibitors. This one cathodic inhibitors can work to slow the cathodic reaction down or they can work to selectively uh, to, uh, to selectively precipitate on the cathodic region of the metal. In order to restrict the diffusion of the metal surface of the elements that are eroded, eroded means corroded about that. So next one is that your corrosion, uh, uh, this one uh, the cathodic one, sorry, either, either. Okay, uh, anodic inhibitors uh, about that, this type of corrosion forms preventive etc. about that. Uh, example cathodic, uh, cathodic uh, inhibitors include uh, sulphide and bisulphite ions which can react with uh, oxygen to form sulphates. Another uh, example is cathodic inhibitor is catalyzed redox reactions by nickel. Anodic inhibitors, these type of corrosion inhibitors form a thin preventive oxide layer on the surface of the metal. This reaction leads to big anodic shift turning the, meta, turning the metallic surface into a passivation area. This passivation area helps to reducing the corrosion of the metal. Example anodic inhibitor includes chromates, nitrates, orthophosphates and molybdates. Orthophosphates means that reaction, this one orthophosphates etc. So, so far I have discussed about that uh, corrosion and its control, uh, about the tinning, galvanization, etc., phosphating, etc. So, thank you.